Ooh, let's talk about launch copy because launch copy is some of my favorite types of projects to work on as a copywriter. By the way, I'm Sarah Turner. I'm a freelance copywriter and copywriting mentor, and I have actually run over 40 launches between my business and clients' businesses, and I've overseen over $3 million in ad spend on various launches over the years as a copywriter. I've actually been a copywriter for going on almost 10 years, which is super exciting, and honestly, I can't believe it's been that long. Um, But yeah, I have learned so much over the years. And Launch Copy provides a really wonderful opportunity for copywriters and your clients. And so I'm really excited to talk with you about that. In fact, we're actually also going to dig into some of the numbers of initial launches I've launched for clients so you can get an idea of like the power of launching. So first things first, what is a launch? So if you have been in the online space, you have probably heard this term thrown around and maybe wondered exactly what it is. I mean, the word launch itself means to debut something, like I'm launching my website or I'm launching this product. But in the online digital marketing space, to launch something usually means to sell something for a limited period of time. And there's a bunch of different reasons you might do this. In fact, there are both practical benefits and marketing benefits to launching. Now, the practical benefits of launching are not something that people often think about. But in my experience, launching can be really powerful, especially for a small business, because it limits the amount of time in which you're usually engaging in like an intense activity, such as spending a lot of money on ads or just needing to onboard new people or to fulfill orders. And so it's really helpful, especially if you're a small business, to have a period of time like crunch time and then to turn it off and to have a period where you can kind of be nurturing the leads that have come in through that launch, but didn't actually end up purchasing. So that's one of the major benefits of launching from just like a practical standpoint. Another practical reason people launch is it kind of limits the resources you need, such as ad spend, mat manpower, maybe the product itself, into a concentrated period of time. I did kind of just touch on that, but that is super worth emphasizing. For example, in e-commerce spaces where I've helped them with a launch, Sometimes it's for a product that they actually want to offload inventory. They want to get rid of a supply so they can create space and wherever they're storing their product. That might make you wonder, wait a minute, does it mean that launching doesn't always have to be for something that's brand new? Yes, launching does not need to be for a brand new product or service. You can always launch something. Again, it's so much more about the fact that you are having a burst of excitement and energy and ad spend potentially um around the particular product and that the cart is not open forever it's going to close at some point that is really what makes a launch in fact a lot of online entrepreneurs will launch certain products that they have only like once a year and again it's so helpful for collecting data for consolidating resources and for making sure that you have a team in place ready to handle everything that's going to be coming in because it can be quite exhausting for whoever is in charge of fulfillment, depending on whatever this product or service is. Okay, so those are the practical benefits of launching. Now, what are the marketing benefits of launching? Well, there is urgency kind of baked into the equation because it's a limited time. So that means because it's a limited time, a timer is gonna run out, a cart is going to close, and that encourages people to make a buying decision before the cart closes, especially if this is something that only launches a few times a year or once a year. So having that sense of urgency, you know, really helps honestly with sales at the end of the day, because it's going to make people have to make a decision right then and there. Another thing that launches kind of inherently do is they create an exclusivity vibe, right? Because if you don't get in on this launch, you're gonna miss out on either a great deal, maybe the opportunity altogether, or if it's a product that's being intentionally like sold out, then you're gonna miss out on the product altogether, right? And so that can be really exciting. This actually also reminds me of another practical point of launching. And sometimes that's because you just have a limited supply. For example, I have a ceramicist that I love and follow on Instagram, and she makes these gorgeous coffee mugs, but she's just herself, it's just her making these coffee mugs. And so she will launch or drop a product, um, let people know when it's gonna be, how many there are, And it's quite frankly, because that's all she can put out. (laughs) And it's also kind of exciting as a buyer because you're trying to get in and purchase that, you know, exclusive mug before somebody else gets it. It can be kind of fun. 
And then finally, one of the major marketing benefits of launching is that it gives you kind of a enclosed experiment or a controlled experiment to work with numbers. You can learn so much from launching because you can have all these numbers to comb through at the end. And then if you were to launch again in the future, you can tweak just a few things and see how that impacts your numbers. Keeping in mind that sometimes we actually don't know what impacts numbers. That has been something I've definitely learned over the years through launching over and over again with many different products and services. Sometimes you're just not 100% sure. You just have a sneaking suspicion. But more often than not, you can learn a ton. Maybe you change the title on a landing page. Maybe you change whatever the lead magnet is. Those things can have a powerful impact on the outcome of your launch. And so it's worth testing and trying again and seeing what the impact ultimately is. Obviously, this is only going to work with something that you might launch a few times, like a program is common, a course is common, a service is common, group coaching is a common one that's like launched over and over. Um, sometimes products, maybe there's a deal, a special deal or a bundle or something like that. These are all different ways that you can kind of get creative about launching. Now, I just mentioned a few things that you can tweak to gain insight into your launches and how to make them better. Let's dig into the different types of copy that are generally needed for digital marketing launch funnels, right? Because launches can look pretty different depending on whatever the product or services, the industry, but I'm mostly talking about digital marketing with online businesses, right? And so typically the funnel starts with either a organic piece of copy or a paid piece of copy like an ad, which moves into a lead magnet, which gets the prospect to give you their email into an opt-in, right? And then that will ultimately take them to that lead magnet to enjoy, which will maybe bring them to either a video sales letter or a sales page. And then usually you end up on an email list where you can then be nurtured from then on out. And everything I just mentioned is the whole funnel, right? So let's dig into each of those just a bit more because this is kind of the great opportunity for copywriters. Launch, launching as a copywriter is a lot of fun because you get a chance to experiment and try new things and learn and get numbers and feedback on your actual copy and on the strategy that you've implemented. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. And it's a great opportunity for you like in an earning potential because it's something that's highly valued because it's something that has a massive impact on your client's business. And so it's a really great opportunity as a copywriter to get really good at launches. So backing up, first things first is where people initially find you. You can use organic pieces of copy, i.e. blogs, things like that, where people kind of find you organically or social media posts. Absolutely an option if you have like a social media following. Or you can use a paid strategy like an ad, a Facebook ad, an Instagram ad, a YouTube ad. Those are pretty common. Google ads as well. But more often than not, at least in my experience, paid ads are kind of the way they go because you can put a designated amount of ad spend into this particular launch, really grow your lead base, meaning you're going to bring in a bunch of new leads. And even if they don't purchase, it's still valuable because they're going to stick around for whatever nurturing you have in store for them. And maybe they'll purchase at a later date. So that's the top of the funnel. That's where people first find out about the launch, what's going on, or maybe even just the product or service for the very first time. Then we have a lead magnet, something that is super valuable to your lead. More often than not, it's something that's going to get them further along the customer journey, meaning it'll get them closer to realizing or actually even needing the end product that you're ultimately trying to sell. Now with e-commerce products, this is more often than not like free shipping or a discount, but I've actually seen an incredible amount of success with people including a free product or a free gift. That's really powerful. So don't forget to include that if you are in the e-commerce space as something worth trying. So anyway, we've got this lead magnet. They're like, wow, I wanna learn whatever is in that lead magnet. Maybe it's an ebook or a masterclass or a webinar or a course, a mini course, or maybe it's a free gift that comes with something, like a subscription. And you're like, that's pretty cool. I'm interested in that. Definitely worth giving my email address up for. And you go ahead and you click on that. It takes you to an opt-in page where you see exactly what you're gonna get. You put in your email address. 
and then you receive whatever it is you signed up for, right? So all of that needs copy, right? The organic piece or the paid ad, the lead magnet itself needs to be created and thoughtfully, the opt-in page needs to be created. We have like four pieces of potential copy that we're going to need right out the gate. And again, at the top of the funnel, the different ads and the different organic pieces, social media posts, blogs, whatever, those could be multiple different pieces attracting people from all sorts of different angles, right? So you can see how very quickly there's a lot of copy needs. If at this point you're curious about what I'm talking about and you're not quite sure, I want you to start clicking on some Instagram ads and Facebook ads and actually giving your email. You can use the email you send all your junk to, but it's still a great experiment to see exactly what I'm talking about here because you have come across this so many times. In fact, you've probably entered into it and been pleasantly surprised and really enjoyed what it was. You've also probably entered into one of these funnels and thought, ugh, I hate this. <laughs> We've all done both, probably. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, definitely click on an ad, go ahead and drop your email in there, and you're going to walk through the customer journey of exactly this kind of funnel. Okay, so now you've got the lead magnet, the masterclass, the webinar, the video sales letters, the sales page might be the next thing that you come across. And the sales page is really gonna dig into exactly what you're gonna get. Now, the more expensive and complicated a product or a service is, the longer and heftier the sales page is going to be generally, right? But keep in mind, no matter how good your sales page is, and generally they should be converting between 20 to 50%, mine generally fall around the 30% range, 30 to 40%. No matter what, not everyone's going to buy. And so you want to make sure that you have a really great nurturing experience that follows this launch. Do not forget about all these valuable leads that you have acquired along the way. They're super important and they're interested. They might not be quite ready yet. So after you have that sales page, another high value piece of copy that would be great to add to the whole launch package you're going to offer your client as a copywriter, right? then you're going to go into a nurture sequence, which is going to run for the entire time that the launch is open. So maybe they opted in, but there's still two more weeks of the launch. And then you're going to be getting emails. And I recommend emails every day, sharing stories, sharing social proof, you know, digging into what they're going to get and things like that. And then even after the launch closes, you know, switching them into a nurture sequence where you continue to build a relationship and rapport and share your experience and your expertise. So that is basically a launch. You're going to walk away with a ton of numbers. In fact, I'm going to share with you two clients, two clients who launched for the first time, what their numbers actually looked like. This is really exciting because you'll kind of get a glimpse into what is realistic. You'll see how things are very varied. And also, you're just going to learn a lot. It's really nice to see real life examples. Okay, so let's dig into some actual numbers. These are two different clients who both launched for the first time. They actually both had the same price product. It was a digital product that was about $1,000. Um, there were payment plans, but uh, I chose two people who had similar priced products so that we could kind of compare them side by side. The one thing is, is they are a few years apart and a lot has changed in the ad spend world, as you'll see. So... First, we've got client A. This was actually somebody who uh, we launched later. It was in 2021. So actually, why don't we jump over to client B? So client B, this was a quick two-week-ish launch, right? You can see here we did ad spend for about 14 days, 13 days-ish, and then we stopped it, right? And then this is where there, it was still open for a few days, and then it looks like the cart closed on the 17th. So what happened was, as you can see, this is the Facebook ad spend per day. It, we slowly ramped up, ramped up ad spend and we collected leads. So keep in mind something that is really exciting is not only just the collected profit and the earned profit, but the actual number of leads. This is 1,600 people who are interested in this client's product service. And um, it's really important to take care of those guys after. So uh, we made 21 sales. We collected $10,000 about, and then revenue earned was about 23000 Now, the difference between these two numbers is the payment plans. 
So because it was a $1,000 product, um, so you can see here, there was one sale. It was a thousand, about $1,000. Um, and so revenue earned and collected is the same. But when there's a payment plan, this number increases because usually people tack on a bit of interest because it costs money to keep payment plans running. So this is our cost per lead. This is, you can see how much it costs to acquire each of these people, right? So we check out this formula here. It's the spend divided by the number of leads and that gives us the cost per lead. So right, uh, obviously you want a lower cost per lead. Uh, ads have generally gotten more expensive over the years. And then this is your cost per sale number. So overall cost per sale was $274, $75. That is fantastic. That's really good. That means how much we had to spend to acquire a new sale, right? So again, over here, collected profit. This is how much we profited um, off of the ad spend initially right out the gate. So they immediately, this client earned $47.88. Uh, 80, um, and then earn profit will be as the payment plans pay out over time, What was be, what is going to be brought into the business. So this is a first launch. This is a pretty successful first launch, if you ask me. And your client is going to be so excited because they invested, you know, about 5700 got back, got out of it, 4700 And that is really the power of launches and the power of marketing and copywriting and ad spend. Um, and then they added this to their bottom line over time. So this is a little two-week launch. Um, and then over here... We have a bigger launch, this client. Uh, we kind of decided to spread it out over time. This was in 2021. As you can see, ad spend is a little bit more expensive. In general, like I said, it's kind of gone up. Um, it, you know, it can still it can, it can still be closer to $2, um, which used to be kind of the gold standard back in the day, although I think that's changed. Uh, but ultimately, so we've got Facebook, we experimented with a longer um, launch, right? So you can see here that these are the number of leads and the number of sales. Looks to me like the last day of the launch was probably here because you usually see the most sales on the last day. Um, although I don't quite remember off the top of my head. So from the 29th. So it was a little bit, it was almost a month long launch. Um, they collected about 900 leads, again, keeping in mind that that is a valuable number itself. They spent about $4,400, made 13 sales, um, and collected uh, $5,000 in revenue. So they only made about $771 in profit. I do remember that this was a product that does not have a direct ROI. So it can be a little bit harder to sell, right? Because they're not going to be earning money on the back end. It was more of an emotional sell. Um, but their business overall earned $10,000 in profit. And quite frankly, this is pretty good for a first launch. Um, cost per lead was a, a little high. I would love to see it lower than this. Cost per sales, pretty darn good too. Um, and then they had again, 13 sales. The thing that also to keep in mind about launches especially first launches, is you're going to usually get better and better every time you go. So as long as you're profitable, as long as you collected a profit, didn't lose money, although I definitely had launches where we lost a little bit of money, um, you know, you're going to, the the only way through, the only way forward is up. So you, yeah, you just got to keep that in mind when you're communicating that to your client. These are the key metrics to keep an eye on. Obviously, you also want to keep a track of different conversion rates of the different pieces of copy that you were writing. But these are two really pretty good launches, especially for the first go. So I hope that helps. Okay, so I really hope that helps. I want to leave you with a few things that are super important to remember. First things first, remember that each step of the funnel is just trying to get you to the next. The ad is not trying to sell the end product. That would be way too far of a jump to make. The ad is just trying to get them to sign up for the lead magnet in exchange for an email address. The lead magnet is just trying to maybe educate them and excite them about the possibilities of whatever is going to come next. The opt-in is just trying to get them to exchange that email address, right? The sales page is trying to make a sale. And the emails are trying to nurture, trying to build rapport. Some people are more aggressive than others. 
I think it's really a good idea to like ask for the sale right out the gate. I actually used to be a little more laid back in that area and wait a few emails in. Um, I've definitely changed. I mean, it's, I haven't I haven't waited in years, but it's good to do that. But also keep in mind, because I do see a lot of like marketing bros do this, that your leads like have some respect for your leads. Like they're, they're important people. They're on your list. They're interested. And so you don't need to hammer them with sales all the time. You just need to build a relationship, build a rapport, establish credibility, be helpful sometimes even. And ultimately, that's how you play the long game, right? I have seen people who just hammer, 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 even in the nurture sequence, uh, going after more sales, upsells, downsells. Um, I have actually found that keeping launch funnels super clean and um, simple is the most effective way. So I've I've stopped doing upsells and downsells. Sure, you can make a few extra dollars on the back end sometimes, um, but usually you retain a lot more of your leads on your email list when you're not constantly hammering them. <laughs> so that's just my way of doing things. And also, I like to establish a long relationship. You know, I've had people now who've been on my email list for like four years uh, who tell me that they like sticking around for the value and the content. Um, so yeah, just keep in mind that having respect for your leads is super important. I kind of feel like I shouldn't have to say it, but I've definitely seen other examples. So wanted to throw it in there. The other thing that I want to give you as a key takeaway is that launch copy is a great opportunity as a copywriter. It's complex. Not every client's going to need it. And it's something that is really great if you take an experimental approach to it. You're going to have a lot of different copy deliverables that you're going to need to give your client. But the end result is often wonderful and a huge win right out the gate and a pretty concentrated amount of time. So consider adding launch copy to the things that you study. Keep in mind, ad spend is usually on the line. So really work on your craft and get good at what you're doing so that you can actually like deliver um, what you're saying you can deliver when you work with a client. But ultimately, you'll learn so much through launch copy. You'll learn so, so much. So it's a lot of fun. Give it a whirl. Start to study the different pieces and how they get together, right? And ultimately, pitch it to a client and see what, what comes of it. Make sure, though, if you're going to do launch copy, you're going to have to have the courage to ask for numbers because that's how you're going to learn. Open rates, conversion rates, all of those numbers are going to inform any launch copy that you do in the future. And I promise you, you will be surprised sometimes. So, OK, I hope that helps. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I'd love to create a follow up video to this. I'm curious what your questions are, though. And of course, don't forget to hit subscribe. Thanks, guys.